Rokit has released a new device, the Rokit Station, a perfect sidekick for the Rokit Max glasses you might have heard of. You know those glasses that project a virtual cinema before your eyes that I've been talking about a lot? But what is the Rokit Station? Think of it as a pocket-sized Android TV. With this, you can use over 5,000 Android TV apps anytime and anywhere. Lost already? Don't worry. There's been a barrage of new devices in this space, and I'm here to break it all down for you. So today, I'll explain what the Rokit Station does and share my first impression. Thanks to Rokit for supporting the channel today by partnering with us. And I'm Cass. I hope you're doing well. Come for VR and stay to explore what lies beyond the reality. Now, before we get into the pros and cons of the Rokit Station, let's roll back a sec. You may wonder, what the f is Android TV? It's essentially Google Smart TV OS. Think of it like Android, but for your TV, soundbars, and more. With the Rokit Station, you're plugging into Android TV 12, giving your Rokit Max glasses a dashboard like this. The best part is that you get instant access to the already established Google Play Store. So, gamers, you can leap into cloud gaming with apps like Steam Link, Moonlight Game Streaming, and NVIDIA GeForce Now. Binge watchers can rejoice. HDCP support means your faves on Disney Plus or others like HBO Max are a go. And the multitaskers? Connect a Bluetooth keyboard and just set for some on-the-go productivity. Plus, with over 5,000 apps in the Play Store, there's plenty to explore. I recommend googling Android TV apps to discover what's available and to see if there's anything that you would use. Since this OS is backed by Google, you also get access to signature Google features. The station packs Google Assistant, allowing you to voice commands or queries. While it's not quite at ChatGPT level, I must say I'm thoroughly impressed with it. Furthermore, the station doubles as a Chromecast, so if you have a compatible device, you can cast screens wirelessly to your Rokit Max glasses. Whether it's YouTube, Google Chrome Pages, or even for fun, I tried casting my Quest 2 headset and it worked like a charm. I appreciate this OS. It's sleek, minimal, and fuss-free. The kind of UI I prefer. I'm not a fan of random apps clogging up the space. I like my OS's clean and straightforward, echoing why I favor phones like the Google Pixel over the more cluttered alternatives. But I digress. Enough Google talk. Let's talk about the design before we head to my first impressions. The Rocket Station is sleek and functional. You use physical buttons to navigate to the OS. Here's a quick rundown. On top, there are directional buttons for up, down, left, right, a confirmation button to select items, and below there's a back key for retracing steps, a home button to swiftly return to the main screen, an apps key to quickly access your list of applications, and a settings button to tweak and tailor your experience. On the left, you have volume buttons to adjust audio levels, uh, duh, and on the right, a power key. And at the bottom, a micro HDMI port facilitating display out capabilities and a USB-C port designated for charging. Alongside, you'll find both a status and battery indicator to keep you informed of the device's condition. In addition, Rokit provides a remote in the box. This remote mirrors many of the station's buttons, but comes with an added bonus, a dedicated button to summon Google Assistant. That's the layout. Now let's weigh out the pros and cons of the user experience, starting with what the Rokit Station gets right. Independence and portability. With the station, the Rokit Max glasses shatter dependency on external devices. Before, you were limited by compatibility issues. If you had a device that didn't gel well with the glasses, it was a no-go. Now with the station in tow, it's like giving wings to your Rokit Max glasses because you can do a lot with just this setup and cinema on the go. Imagine having a cinema that fits in your backpack. That's precisely what this combo offers. Whether you're at a park, on a train, or simply lounging at home, you've got a cinematic experience right here. And if you're outdoors and the sun's glare is too harsh, there are covers you can easily snap onto the glasses. Problem solved. Then simultaneously charge and play. This one's a biggie for me. 
The station allows you to juice up while still being engrossed in your movie or game. No more interruptions because of low battery. And the station actually has a 5000 mAh built-in battery. On a full charge, you can expect around 5 hours of playtime. It's also not just an accessory for your glasses because the station can double up as a power bank. Lastly, there's offline playback and 3D support. If you don't want to rely on your internet, you can import your favorite videos and watch them offline. Here's the cherry on top. The glasses are 3D compatible, so in essence, you're not just getting a cinema, you're getting a 3D cinema. Now, no device is perfect, so let's dive into areas where Rogue could potentially up its game. Netflix users will have to wait. Rogue is on its way to securing a certificate to enable Netflix support. They've promised to keep us updated on this front. And yes, this setup boasts portability. But remember, you will need Wi-Fi to get the best out of most apps. I was also hoping to see features like head stabilization. Unfortunately, it's still missing. Fingers crossed that Rocket will consider it in future updates. There's also no option to use the device with 3 degrees of freedom tracking. The lack of 3 dove means you can't pin screens anywhere in your environment and that the virtual screen follows your eyes wherever you look. Again, I hope this is on Rogue's radar for the future. Lastly, being Android-based, it's no surprise, but it's worth noting Apple's air casting is off the table. But the Rogue Station is an interesting device. It might cater to a niche though, but it does that effectively. It's perfect for those who've had their eye on the Rogue Max glasses, but lacked a compatible device or simply didn't fancy the idea of locking around external devices. I can see a clear use case where you might not want to watch movies using your own device to preserve battery like when you're on a long flight, so you can just use the station instead. If you think about it, it is a pretty cheap phone alternative. You can pre-order the Rocket Station until August 31st for $129, after which it will retail at $139. You can also get the Stasia and Max bundle at a pre-order price of $529, which will be $550 eventually. I'll put the link below. So what's your take on the Rocket Station? Would this be a device you'd integrate into your tech arsenal? Sound off in the comments below. Now, if you're still on the fence about video glasses in general, you may want to watch this video right here that I've linked and appreciate you tuning in. If you found this insightful, drop a like. If you didn't, drop a dislike. And if you're hungry for more, hit that subscribe button to XR on